Hey guys, how are you guys doing today? Good um, morning. I, sometimes, honestly, I wish you guys are a fly on the wall and you could hear our conversations. It's like I'm... George crying last night. <laughs> well, I was kind of, I, I was broken hearted because um, I, I didn't get to spend the night with Scott. Anyone. There you go. Cheer. Don't want to be all by myself. Cheer. Anymore. By the way, I'm just doing yeah. that's not a full I, I just spent a night with myself. I never need you're gonna get canned and you can forget about that fifty peso raise after the oh, new damn. year. There goes my raise, guys. Yeah, you're not gonna actually get it. That's my green juice, lady. You better put that down. Put what down? That. Oh, yeah. No, she's talking about my popcorn. Okay, George yeah. is having popcorn for breakfast. Well, okay. For those of you who are Filipinos, there's something. No, no, seriously. They, there's something we call corn nuts. <laughs> I've got a corn nut over. And I figured out how to make them. Corn nuts is nothing but popcorn, but puffed in a certain manner. This is a corn nut. This it's a popcorn. That's popped in a certain way, and it's really good. It's very toasty. I'm not joking. They sell this stuff. I figure out how to make it. Keep it short and sweet today. Short and sweet. Yeah, I got it. Uh, yeah, keep it short and sweet. Just like my member, short and sweet. No, 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 no,
I brought one of those, what, Saracenus. It was one of those portable um, Air, coolers. Yeah, which was And Heidi was like, you don't need that. That's what I said. And I said there should be an inside should, waiting. Correct. No, incorrect. Not, the, not here. The departure, yes. So when you're leaving Clark, which is weird, Clark International, go you go inside and nice cool air in the arrival section. I mean, because think about it. If I was dropping George off, he'd be like, skadoosh, I'm just going to drop his ass off hey. and I'm going to roll on out of here and go on down to Candy Palace and have a party. Keyword, roll on. She won't even wait for the for the van to stop. Skadoosh, right on out the door. And I'm, um, I'm, I'm like, I'm like so there. He's, but... he's safely there. Um, and... Uh, you want to show him your pasaboolum gong gong well, gong? we might want to show Scott. Bang a gong. Well, what if he doesn't show up? I just said that, dude. And also, we have um, an excitement, an exciting announcement, um, but we can't quite tell you guys. I know it's kind of weird, but um, we literally just found out the full details last night. What you talking about, Willis? Well, it's scary for me when I think about the entire situation of putting my life into your hands when it comes down to this. But I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to trust you. Dang it. <laughs> Curse is full again. I'm going to let you put your hands on the stick just once. That's why it's called ejection seat. No, you're not getting an injection seat. Dang it. Curse is full again. We, we literally just found out. And I'm really excited because it's going to majorly change our lives. And we received a very generous, um, actually several generous Christmas gifts uh, Well, I was recently. several, but. Yeah, well, try try manscaping. Stop. Did you take your caffeine yet? Down, boy. What caffeine? Oh, did you? No, no, you're I didn't. drinking. I didn't. No, no, no. Okay, guys, we were up since three o'clock in the morning, only because some some cat decided to throw off our phone on the floor out of a whim twice in a row. Here in the Philippines. I'm not making that up. You can't make that hey, babe, stuff today up. Today it's SEO all day. What, SEO? Philippines, 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 Angel City, Philippines, Angel City, Philippines, Angel hot, City, hot, Angel hot, City. Hot, 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 hot stuff. The weather's bad. The weather's hot. Philippines, um, Angel City. Um, what do you say? Uh, Clark International Airport. Right. Philippine Antics. Philippine Antics. That's what? weird. And um, George, officially the other channel that we were going to call, uh, it's our pet channel that we're trying to build on right now. It will be George the Cat Lady, PH. So basically, George is so into cats, he's become the cat lady of the Philippines. Well, the reason why we call it the cat lady of the Philippines because I have a lot of pussy. You do. At one point, you had 14 living in here and like five outside. Ever wondered about a Filipino man's extraordinary love for felines? Welcome to the captivating life of George, the cat lady from the Philippines. Born and raised in the vibrant city of Angeles, George is Kapampangan through and through. Nestled in the heart of the Philippines, Angeles City is known for its rich culture, delectable cuisine, and the warm hospitality of its people. Just as the city thrives with life, so did the young George, whose heart would beat with an unusual fondness for the feline kind. From the tender age of five, George found himself drawn to the cats in his neighborhood. He would spend hours watching them, learning their ways, understanding their behaviors. In the process, he developed a deep bond with these creatures, a bond that would only grow stronger with time. As George grew older, his love for cats didn't wane. Instead, it flourished, turning into something much more than a simple pet owner relationship. To George, cats were friends, family, a vital part of his existence. He treated each one with care and respect, understanding their unique personalities and needs. The turning point in George's life came when he met an American expat, a woman who shared his extraordinary love for cats. It was a match forged in the feline heaven. They fell in love, not just with each other, but also with the idea of creating a haven for cats. Together, they've turned their home into a sanctuary for these furry creatures. Their house buzzes with the gentle purring of cats, their garden is a playground for the feline adventurers, and their lives are filled with the joy and warmth that these creatures bring. George's life is testament to a unique love story, one that transcends the boundaries of nations and species. His journey from a young boy fascinated by cats in Angeles City to a man who shares his life and love with these creatures is truly inspiring. Every day, George wakes up to the sound of purring, to the sight of tails swishing, to the feeling of soft fur against his skin. And every day, he is reminded of his lifelong love for cats, a love that has shaped his life in the most beautiful way. In summary, George's life is a rich tapestry woven with threads of love, compassion, and an extraordinary fondness for cats. His journey, his love story with cats, is a beacon of hope for all the feline lovers out there. It's proof that our love for these creatures can drastically shape our lives, 
filling them with joy, warmth, and a sense of purpose. So here's to George, the cat lady from the Philippines, a man whose love for cats has turned his life into an enchanting feline symphony. His story is a testament to the profound bond between humans and animals, a bond that can enrich our lives beyond measure. You get five outside and four inside, but that's the one thing that attracted me to George is he... Oh, I... Yes. You're no Tom Cruise, so keep it together. Tom Cruise. Tom oh, Cruise. dang. Yeah, I yeah, sis. So Love you, sis. He, Love you, bro. Love he you, just mom. loves cats, guys. He just loves the cats. And that's the one thing. Uh, be honest, George. Yeah, if you need a diving the, instructor, I'm the man. What's the first... What's the first photo that you sent me? Um, well, it was it was actually a, you and Layla. a PlayStation 3 photo that I had. That's not it. He he always was sending me the cat photos. But actually did but after that we just start going out and dating and everything else. But he loves animals. He he had a couple dogs. That's why I love Heidi. Cats. Oh, you like to pet on me? Is that what it is? I'm not your Peppa Pig. Oh. I'm not Peppa Peppa. So, but, so, but no, that's how it starts. So I told George we had Cookie Dior because that's the name of our main cat that's here. And I was like, no, why don't we Bings? It's going to be you and the cats and our cat life and pet life. I said, why don't you just call yourself George the cat lady? Because you're like a cat lady. He's I'm not a cat lady. And I said, like, yes, you are. You, you have like four uh, cats. Technically, no. Technically, no. Um, I did not make the rules, guys. Just so you guys know. Don't Technical rules are you're not a cat lady, quote unquote cat lady, until you break the limit of four cats per person in the household. Yeah, but so, we got four outside. No, no, no. That those, live in our yard. Those don't count. Outside cats don't count. Only inside cats. We have exactly four. There he is cats. being technical again. So therefore, I am not a cat lady. And especially since you're with me, that would make it two per two, which means I'm far from. 50% from being a cat lady. Not even close, actually. We did. Broke, man. I'm just going to let you know that's AI generated. So, you know, color, creed, religion, looks, or whatever. I just said put a crazy looking guy that lives in the Philippines, and that's what it produced. Could be Asian, man. Could be Jesus. I don't know. True story, didn't I? It's AI generated. Yeah, no. no, no it no. is AI generated. No, no, so, no, so um, yeah, that will be the subject today is. We just got contacted like two days ago in regards to this guy that is just totally desperate. Okay. And the guy literally came here with a pocket full of money and no future plans. And he has blown it. It Medical can be done. lady and rent filling up a house and everything with no plans of social security in the near future. He's still off by about what? 12, 14 years, a ways off. And because of this, um, now he's struggling. Now he thinks he can get a job and he's going through all of this. How He's asking us about jobs. And I'm like, dude. And so we get it. And people on budgets and social security and all that, it's doable because me and George was talking about last night. What was I saying about if you're struggling in the U.S. OK, and you have the opportunity to make a better life. A lot of people like I just seen a woman that's moved that moved to Italy. Same thing. Her her retirement funds are going five times as far just from living in another country besides the U.S. And with the way the border patrol is going in the U.S. and hundreds of thousands of, of the migrants that are going in there, the rents are going to go up, the crime's going to go up. And I told George that things, the costs are just going to start soaring. So a lot of people are moving overseas. But what did I tell you that if I was in a position that I couldn't afford rent, yeah, I'm going to take X amount of money, but you have to have a plan. You have to have some backup check. You have to have some backup money with it. But here's the thing be homeless in the U.S. and or not or have to live with eight family members, which some people are, or, you know, take a chance by visiting the Philippines a few times and making a plan to move on over here where your budget will be cut in half. And these people can live on their Social Security or pensions or both and live a better life. OK, but it depends on how you spend it. And that's going to be today's discussion, because this guy, it was heartbreaking. He, he's desperately trying to find a job. And then he was talking about like that John thing. You know, I'm going to go to a call center and I'm going to do this, this and that. But it's like even the call centers for the best people, and that's if you don't end up in one of those scam call centers, those scam call centers exist here all over. They'll hire you in a heartbeat, and then they arrest the whole call center. And that's happened a lot here lately in the last few months that they get those scam ones on the crypto or stealing information. They do a bunch of stuff, get them on the line, send me these gift cards, and boom. But you're only going to make about 1200 a month, and they're going to work you 10 hours a day, six days a week for that kind of money. And that's if they hire him, and he gets the immigration. He doesn't even have money for immigration anymore. It's bad. So that'll be our discussion. We'll take questions, comments, and that's where we're at on this. But yeah, anyways, kind of no, 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 no
that's that's why I did the thumbnail and AI generated somebody like, you know, this guy probably does look like this. We talked to him on the phone. We've received messages from him. So we've been busy with that the last few days. And I can only picture the guy. What What is that guy where he's doing this in the painting? The scream? Yeah. The girl? The, the, it is. It's Da Vinci? Or the is scream. It? Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. But I said, just give me crazy, just give me crazy expat. And that's what they gave me, guys. So. A long time ago, he was in love with a Filipino girl very deeply. Um, he was very young. She turned out to be married. Um, she goes, I have to be honest. My husband comes tomorrow. I said, what? It sounds like an OFW. Yeah, and that, that happens too, guys. I, I get concerned with a lot of guys that come here. There's usually happily ever afters, but I've seen him go as far as the stage. You arrive, you meet him, and people that have been in their photos on Facebook and their channels or whatever they've got going on, it turns out to actually be a married woman, especially if there's kids or new babies or a lot of guys around in the photos, they're not always best friends. So it's, yeah, it's yeah. kind of a... Now, realistically, again, I mean, I hate to say this because it's coming from me. Um, some Filipinas or Filipinos are scammers. And what I'm getting at is you're lucky if they did what Ted Dengen says that they actually admit, hey, by the way, my husband's coming home tomorrow. You're lucky if they do that to you. You're unlucky if they said, oh, yeah, just come over, fly, fly over, I'll pick you up at the airport, and then that's it. And then you fly over to the airport, and then there's nobody there to pick you up. Or to make it, things worse, give you a fake address. So, yeah, that does happen. Because, honestly, I would say 80% of these scammers, again, they they scam you, and they really don't expect you to fly over here. Me and Heidi, honestly, we get a lot of emails. We get a lot, a, a lot of rapport with a lot of expats. And honestly, we look at each other like, they're not coming to the Philippines ever. Right? Yeah. Right. So that's what I'm getting at. And it's not just us. I believe certain vloggers, I'm not going to name any vloggers, but even them, they said, well, big surprise to these Filipinas. All of a sudden, the, their American counterparts are coming over. Yeah, especially during the pandemic, a lot of them hooked up. Um, our live, um, we're just going to willy nilly lives, you know, the next few weeks. Um, we'll have one probably Saturday and Sunday. I'm not sure. But the next live for sure, we're going to cover where they actually have an app and a website. And it's becoming a big deal about the dating going on here. And it's kind of a crazy. <laughs> it's a different world. <laughs> what the heck? Thanks, cat lady. It's a different world. It's something like that. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it, it'll show the income of some of the ladies, and we'll be able to show this app and go through it. And I know it's different, but it's pertaining to the Philippines because basically it's about getting a sugar daddy. So it's, um, it'll be quite interesting, and George can go into five ways to score a Filipina, and I'm just going to let him, you know. What? Hey, George the Cat Lady. Hey, yeah. that's, that's our channel, guys. George the Cat Lady, Philippines. Oh, guy. Oh, there's Scott. Scott, hello, everyone. Hey, Scott, you made it. Hey, yeah. hey, he's actually, yes. Yeah, so yeah, he's Scott's actually been here. Um, I guess he jet lag wasn't wasn't too bad. So, Beings, we know he's in the house. I didn't see it further down. Beings, he is in the house. A big, big thank you for a pesta. Pesta boo boo, boo boo, boo boo, long, okay. long. So we're just going to run him through the Jolly Bee drive through. Well, I was asking if he was hungry. I was going to give him some hot dogs. Nobody wants that old red hot dog. Reddish brown hot dog. Cat lady. <laughs> uh, oh, um, just so you guys know. It's good um, to see him. You look. Yeah. Um, show him the gift. Um, yeah, Scott. Um, Scott. Go ahead. Yeah. No, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I got other stuff. We just found out some exciting news last night, but we'll we'll discuss that in a little so, bit. So, Scott, in the world as I see it, has been very generous. Um, let me open it up. Let me take out the plastic is still on it. Whoa, watch out. Yeah, well, you haven't had a chance to fully set okay. it up. And then this is the screen cover. Ah, I actually haven't set it up. We're not using it right now because we can't show it to you if we're using it right now for obvious reasons. Well, that and it takes time and to set it up. We were and here it is. Ta-da! He had purchased actually, us a laptop. It's actually very, bigger than my head. Everything's bigger than your head, except for other Filipinos' heads. Well, actually, let's see. Life size? Oh, yeah. Yep, definitely bigger than my head. I hope you can find yourself a one-way ticket somewhere. You can do like the prices right. Da, 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 da. There you go. <laughs> thank you so much, Scott. We really, really needed that. Thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you so I much, Scott. I um, cannot say enough about. Yeah, the laptop we're using or... again, and the screen is flickering. It's kind of funny. 
and we have to use a monitor in order to see what's on the screen. And like half the keys are stuck, but it doesn't help that the cats jumped on it. So when one day we had it open, they dump right on top of it. Well, you don't have the. Well, oh, that's it's always been like that though. But thank you so yeah, much. Thank you, thank you so much, Scott. Appreciate it. So um, and this kind, this kind of actually ties in. I think I'm going to mention the other situation. Um, I want license to distribute. Well, George did get his license. So for those that don't know, we had put it off for a while, and probably now we see for a good reason. Um, we have, um, we have a um, George got his license most recently. And um, like for expats, it's a little different than George being a Filipino citizen and everything. There's a way to exchange it and go in. And it's a fairly easy system. And conversion. they do have, they do have the cards physically. Now um, they do. We were contacted last night and given the final details about another Christmas present that came in. I'm going to let you actually say what you think can be said about it. Well... Which has kind of changed some of our plans. We're all right going to be happy because we'll, we'll be sharing it. It's a. <laughs> Why I can't take you? Do you know they got this on the Zada, right? Come on. I've got myself a new doll. Gcash okay. is second to cash. Cash is king in the Philippines here. Gcash is second. What I'm saying is they'll probably they'll take. Your GCash first before they'll take your MasterCard. Um, it's unfortunately now chosen. Obviously, again, I survived without GCash for years in the Philippines. Again, you don't oh need God. it, but it's very helpful. Um, oh, yeah. everybody's been so nice. It's been a, it's been a great year. And so does everybody has given so much like this family on this new gift and Scott's been so generous. So I appreciate that really. Thank you so much, Scott. Appreciate it. It's it's hard for me. It's probably, probably just menopause. So just menopause, Scott. Don't, don't get me all, don't get me all twisted. Get off of me. (laughs) True story. She said that's saying that. Uh, Um, Get off of me. Thank you. Yeah. So you guys are thinking of, Arriving in the Philippines, right? Sorry, right, I was just reading the message. Uh, yeah, he's still desperate. We just got another message from him. Sorry. Um, yeah. Never a dull moment. Yeah, never a dull moment. All right. So this guy, which we will, for his sake, not mention his name, actually came here with under nine thousand eight. It, it wasn't oh quite that, including his ticket. So somehow, and he did mention names of vloggers that he has watched. He somehow, I, I don't think he, I don't think he said we could talk about Oh, this. that's what I'm missing. I don't think all of his um, coming to the Philippines and the guy had just cash, no future social security, not for another, actually it's 15 years before his social comes in. And he's come here on a month to month visa. Like there's been no planning. He just figured that it wasn't based on us saying, yeah, you could live on a budget, blah, blah, blah. We've always said and will never change. You have to have incoming income one or two sources better to have those two sources so this guy literally came in with less than 10 grand and he's run into medical problems he's run into giving money to girls trying to show off um but the medical bill is what set him back and also he he's just done everything to break every rule now he's looking for a job and so he's desperately like you know can i youtube can i this how long does it take? He's really been picking our brain on YouTube is what the recent thing has been. Um, and we talked to him since he's been here. He let us know about his medical issues. He has no interest. The guy had zero plans, guys. And this isn't a, this is not a, um, this is not an original thing that's happened. The biggest story that we can think about would be like expat John, but at least he only had two or three years. I think in the end, they said it was closer to four years. He had miscalculated it. But he had several years until his social security came through and he bought expat john bought a motorcycle did almost the same thing that this guy this guy came way after the fact this was a few years ago that this expat john thing went down he he had a young woman that he wasn't married to it was just his girlfriend that had twin babies the babies were sick and he helped build on squatter land additional plate you know like a he didn't build a whole house we found out he built an actual addition to the house is where his money went 
And then he would go in town and go to bars, stay at hotels for long periods when they were fighting. They fought all the time. Things got rough. Then he was giving out money to people for, he just gave it all out to where he was broke and had to go back to the U.S. Well, this guy didn't even save plane ticket money. Right. That was the very, so he doesn't have oh shit money anymore. He has nothing. He's down to maybe being able to live here another two months. There was another, uh, we'll talk about that and take your guys' comments on that. But remember, I haven't even looked for an update about that guy that um, the old gentleman about England. He was a U.S. citizen, the England guy going back to England. And he's been here for months on the generosity of a Filipino. Yeah. Okay. And he let his Social Security um, lapse because he didn't update addresses or bank. He didn't update the bank. The bank sent him notifications to his old address. He didn't answer them. They stopped his Social Security. If the check rejects. For months, he hasn't received the Social Security. So he's got back pay for that. But now he doesn't have a banker. I have not checked for any update on that recently. But the same thing happened to him. He was only on Social Security with no backup cards, no nothing. He was older. One of his girlfriends took him for a bunch of money. These are common pitfalls and stories that people need to learn from, 1,000%. And it's it's definitely, you definitely need that source of income. That, that second I've seen deviate say you definitely need multiple sources. But never come here thinking, and George will get into that later, don't come here thinking you're going to get a job. I think that's the biggest thing that we wanted to say today is it's insane to think about a job when a bank teller female is was in Metro Manila recently being paid 12,000 pesos as an entry position. Are you kidding me right now? That's not very much at all, guys. That's not even, that's barely minimum wage in Metro Manila. And 12,000 pesos we have a modest house at 10,000 pesos a month. <clears throat> 10,000, yeah. So, and this is, this is in a, what I call a so-so subdivision. We're not going to pay, you know, 50,000 pesos a month to go into these super expensive subdivisions because we like the atmosphere and we like where we're at. We're close to everything. We've got, we're close to absolutely everything. So, um, but getting a job would be insane in the Philippines as an expat. And then you're going to hear a bunch of people make all these claims about, oh, you can get a job and don't worry about it or do an online job. Oh, no, no, no. You realize how much competition is going for those jobs and you got to wait for incoming teaching jobs. And then on top of that, you got to make sure all the paperwork's in order. If you're going to get an online job, secure it wherever you are now before right. you move here. Mm-hmm. You don't fly here, then get an online job. Mm-hmm. That's a bad idea. And you got to make sure with that incoming digital nomad visa that's up and coming. We just released a video on it that you got the tax thing still. You're still working here if you're online. A lot of people try to send it back to the UK or other places um, as in they're working in the UK. No, they're not. You're still physically working here no matter what anybody says. And then you got you got work permits if you're not on an SRRB. Just things kind of, we talked about how one rule will trump the other when it comes to jobs. But a call center, then we were talking about that earlier that you get up in a call center here could be 50 50 you're working in a scam korean or it could be an an expat owned as in european or american that is involved in some sort of scam you know operation in itself and you don't want to get caught up in those call centers they arrest the entire call center guys they just had them here in in pampanga two or three of them in the past year that turned out to be bitcoin and other it's just you can't rely on it and then the others like right now he was desperate he was going to just start investing in a sorry sorry store and there's just no money in there. You could be doing that all day. I think the people up the street are losing their shirt right now. I'm almost sure, but I think they were relying on a second. I think he went back to work, to be honest. Not 100% sure, but it looks like he did. But there's no money. There's no, there is no money in a sorry, sorry store either. So starting a business, if you have millions to invest and you could come in on a corporate, um, and I'm just talking off the top of my head without it being in front of me. If you can do all of that and invest, and you're legally allowed to do all that in real estate or something high end and you have millions to invest, then that's where the money will come in. But if you're just coming in and wanting to start a, a rice business and buy a bunch of property and so many things going on, but this guy doesn't even have the option. He is just like SOL shit out of luck and just insane in the membrane. Love you guy, but you're probably watching this, but unfortunately it's a, it's a tough fact because now Maybe he actually thought it was better than being homeless in the U.S. I know he, well, I think I heard well off that if you're desperate in the U.S., coming in a foreign country and being desperate, it's there, not a good idea. There's a difference when you don't have enough coming in. I mean, I guess he figured, okay, I, I'm going to mention too, and we, we like both channels. So we're just, this is, this is just a statement and what I'm thinking. The guy is a big fan of 
of Sunshine Shoulders, and he's a big fan of um, Mark Thornton. And that would be Every Man Has a Story. Both of them have presented a story that they came here with little to nothing, uh, relationship, money-wise, uh, backpack on their back, and they built something. This is not my reflection. This is a lot of people's reflections. They watch the YouTube channels and it makes it look like it's easy and survivable, but you're not seeing the pain they're in. You're not seeing their struggles on the side. You guys are going to see me. If I'm off the chain that day, unfortunately, you guys have seen me off the chain. But I'm going to say that a lot of the YouTubers are not giving 100% of the truth, hence why we like our Philippine journey, hence why I feel that that um, that Sunshine Shoulders gives all this stuff. Like I think he, he tells it right off the hip, too. But he has made an illusion. He said it. I make this look easy. Did he not say that out loud? Now, here's and the so, thing. Just give you a little bit of background again. First off, um, hello, Calvin. And again, yes. be aware, it doesn't matter what Calvin says. He is not responsible for this gentleman. And what I mean by that is I've always said over and over, one man's success is not your success. You mean I'm Now, at all. I watched Calvin a long time ago. And we've always watched him. And the one thing I do remember what he says is, well, I arrived in the Philippines with only $300 in my pocket. That being said, again, not this is Calvin's success. What I'm saying is he came in here, he had $300 in his hey, pocket, Victoria. and he made the go at it, and he succeeded. It doesn't mean you're going to come here, you're going to have the same success. Now, this guy, I bet you, he's like, well, Calvin made it with $300. I got 11, you know, 11 10 grand, whatever. It doesn't matter how much money he's got. He thinks he's going to have the same success. Guess what? No, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, our, our friend currently is down to his last few thousand with no ability to purchase a ticket. Yeah, and be aware, again, I'm a Filipino, but I'm very well versed in Western ways. I mean, you can tell by just me speaking. Right. Um, but again, like I said, we have heard channels that, again, say you can, you can survive and live like a king for $800. No, you can't. $800 would be surviving. We heard channels say, you can live like a king here in the Philippines for $600. No, you can't. You definitely that's cannot. Not really that's that's scraping the bottom. I would do that if I was super desperate. Yeah. I told George, if I became homeless in a car in the U.S. like a lot of it was happening now, and I had a monthly income, then yeah, maybe. Yeah. But I would start out in Mexico for a while and get to know living outside the U.S. or try somewhere near home in case you got to go back for medical. And that's something else. Medical hits people here, and that is one of the biggest no, it does. hard it does. hitting facts. There was that one vlogger in Dumaguete that ended up having to have all those treatments. And then he ended up in that motorcycle accident recently. His money's got to be just flying out the window. I mean, he's self-pay, as I'm to understand. And it's like, you know, some people, if they've got it. God bless them on that. But like for us, we're relying, like me, for Medicare, something serious. Yeah, I would have to fly back to the U.S. just to get a major heart surgery or something. Besides that, we're self-pay so far on everything and been okay. But what happens in 20 years? A lot of guys don't even count on that factor. And I know they're still trying to push a bill through that is actually sitting in Congress where they're going to allow Medicare and all that to work. But a lot of people are counting on those supplements. Once you leave the United States for more than, I believe, a few months, you lose that supplement that pays for your Medicare. Some people are still allowing that to happen, but you lose that. You're not going to get the supplement. So what is it? Medicare pays 80%? Yeah. So your 20% would still be high here for some people. They still don't have that savings like our friend that, you know, that we're discussing today initially. So. Right. And also be aware that, again, as a, ge as a general <laughs> rule, when it comes to rentals, a two-bedroom, two-bathroom with a large yard, on average, as a general rule, runs from a minimum of three grand to five grand. Philippine pesos. Three grand to five grand as a general rule, if it has a ceiling. Keyword, ceiling, not a roof. It has a roof and a ceiling. Minimum of three grand. Okay? If it goes lower than that, they'll probably have beer goggles on. Just saying. Okay? Just, if it's too good to be true, guys... It probably is. Oh, and I want to let you guys know, we just bought this fruit. The one, what we really like about being in an open subdivision that doesn't like stop you from coming in is we do have the vendors, which is really nice. No, it is. It's and very he, nice. It was, was it yesterday you bought the fruit? It was yesterday, yes. Okay. So he bought, no, it was the day before. It's been two days because I made the, um, the cucumber water. Mm -hmm. And um, you bought a bag of QP oranges and two melons. It was how much? I don't remember the total, but it was 70, 80, and so it was 80. under 300 pesos. Yeah. So we paid about $5 for it. Um, I told George it seems a little high, but if we'd have got that at SM or one of it's the. It's way lower. 
you know, it's way lower to buy it from the vendor yes. that was coming through because we found out that it was double the price when yeah. I put everything in a basket. It was double the price. Yeah, it was so, a ching ding ding ding. I ching ding ding. And it's really great. And so it's kind of convenient. I told George that if we're in our 60s, 70s, uh, I wouldn't even say in our 60s because that's not far away, another under 10 years. But let's say we're in our 70s and we really can't get in a car and drive or e trike or order a grab and we're just, we could eat without ever leaving the house or cooking. Yeah. So literally, they bring merienda bread. Merienda, which is snacks. Um, they sell everything going up and down the street, including fruit and stuff. So they sell like tofu, and so it's it's really yeah. nice. But um, I think another expectation on money matters, and talking about that, groceries and items are not as cheap as some people think they are. It right. just depends on the time of the day at the market and which store you go to. Um, I actually thought it would be much cheaper, but it's not as cheap. It was half the price in Mexico to pay for. You know, yeah, I actually saw the banana guy yesterday, which Heidi wanted some bananas. However, unfortunately, that's Jeffrey, the banana guy, was rolling by my cab to see Scott roll in at the same time. Damn you, Scott. I wasn't able to get the bananas. Say, Damn you, Scott. Yeah, of course, is foiled again. Not so crazy. John says we should be coming, living, embracing the opportunity to start with a clean slate. Cheers, also, John. Yes, of course. No, I think people should. I forgot where I heard the statement. I'm definitely thinking it was Facebook, but somebody had made the statement of if you're a failure in the U.S., you're still going to be a failure here. I don't believe that. They're like, if you can't get your money matters together there, you'll never get it together here. I wouldn't say that. Sometimes things force you. I've seen, it, it's like everything. Bad marriages, you end up in a good one. And, and you know, you can't sit there and say, hey, it's not going to happen. Um, everybody, I think the clean slate is a, is a pretty good idea. I wouldn't say that. The U.S., has left a bad taste in many people's mouths as far as living there their entire life. And um, speaking of which, another channel we really love and we talk to is Steve Johnson. Hey, Steve. Channel. I'm waiting for you to give a plug. Philippine Info Channel. Philippine Info Channel. He has recently put into an article, um, and he has an online news article about him, and he talks about why he came to Philippines. Yes, Quite congratulations, right. Steve. Yeah, it's, uh, what, He's on the news. Insider. Yeah, Business Insider. So it's pretty cool, but basically that's famous. what he's... No, I was, I was just. No, I know. Um, and so that's what he's saying. It's the political stuff, and and I said, way to go, because that's the way we feel. And he's kept it open too. You better, you better stop. And so I'm, you know, really proud of him that he got that article. Yes, congratulations, was, uh, yeah. congratulations, good job. I just, it just came to my head when you mentioned the clean slate.